is a short presentation all about the use of dispersion graphs in geography and how to calculate the interquartile range from a set of data. Here we can see a typical dispersion graph of showing pebbles. They are used to show the frequency or range of values for a single set of data. Each dot on the graph represents one piece of information. The more dots there are in a particular category, the more frequently that event has happened. Pause the show, making sure you understand what dispersion graphs are. Dispersion graphs have a few advantages when being used. Patterns in the data can be easily seen in a visual manner. We're able to see more clearly the uh, statistical spread of the data and see if we have any odd anomalies in our answers. Pause the slide and note down the advantages. There are, however, some disadvantages with dispersion graphs. They only work with certain types of data and can only use one type of data at a time. Where multiple values have the same value, it's really hard to tell. Pause the slide and note down the disadvantages of using dispersion graphs. Here we've got a typical exam question with a table of data on the left and a graph partly completed on the right. To the left, we have a table which shows stone sample size for five different stones at four different sites. If we look carefully at the graph on the right, we can see that sites one to three have already been completed where they've put little crosses for each stone sample. Site four, however, is what was going to be done. The first one has been done, which is site four, stone one, three. The next turn to plot has a size of six centimeters. I carefully find six centimeters on the vertical axis and place a cross where it meets site four. I then repeat the process with the other numbers in bold from the table, taking care to make sure I'm matching the correct stone size with the vertical axis and site four. Double check each answer before you move on. The examiners often give charts such as the one on the screen and ask you to calculate the median value and the interquartile range. Firstly, double check the graph is complete and does not need any more data being added to the graph. To work out the median value of the pebbles on the graph opposite, we count towards the middle. It's best to work our way inwards using both fingers. By counting inwards, we can see that we come to the median value of 25. To work out the upper quartile value, we now ignore the median value and find the actual median value of all the stones above it. In this case, there are five stones, so it is the value of the third stone, which is 31 millimeters. To work out the lower quartile value, we simply repeat the process with the bottom of the part of the graph, remembering to count between the numbers beneath and not including the median value. So in this case, we end up with a value of 20 millimeters for the stone. We can see that the interquartile range is therefore the difference between the upper quartile value of 31 and the lower quartile value of 20. This gives us the calculation of 31 minus 20, which equals 11. Pause the show and make sure you can work out these calculations on how to work out the interquartile range and the different median values. The examiner sometimes will give you a set of data as can be seen on the screen. Here we have a sample of 11 pebbles. The question asks, what is the median value and the interquartile range? You will also get a mark, as it can be seen, for showing how you calculate the answer. This is very important to include, since you may get a mark even if you are wrong, or lose a mark if you do not show this but are correct. Your first task is to carefully rank order the pebbles from the smallest to largest in a row. Once the pebbles are in rank order, we are able to first calculate the median value for this set of results. Remember, move your fingers inwards along the data very carefully. In this case, the median value is 25 millimeters. The next question is to work out the lower quartile value. We will be using the first half of all the numbers rank ordered below the median value, 18, 19, 20, 22, and 24. This gives a lower quartile value of 20 millimeters. To work out the interquartile range, I will first need to calculate the upper quartile value for all the rank ordered stones above the 25 millimeter median value with numbers 26 to 34. 
the upper quartile value is 31 millimeters. To calculate the interquartile range, I will calculate the difference between the upper and lower quartile values. This gives me a calculation of 31 minus 20, which equals 11 millimeters. Pause the show to make sure you know how to work these all out. Sometimes the examiner may provide you with an equal set of data, such as the 12 numbers we can see on the screen that have already been rank ordered. To work out the median value, you would use your fingers and work your way inwards until they meet, just like before. In this case, it is at 16 and 18, so the median value is halfway between these at 17. To calculate the lower quartile value, we use all the rank ordered numbers below the median value, in this case between 5 and 16. The answer is halfway between 10 and 15. To work out the answer, we add the two numbers together and divide by 2. This gives us a lower quartile value of 12.5. To work out the interquartile range, we will need to work out the upper quartile value, which is 25.5. So the interquartile range is 25.5, the upper quartile value, minus the lower quartile value of 12.5, which gives us an answer of 13. This concludes the presentation. If unsure of anything, then rewind the show and go over any points again.